In my latest series, Motherboard We Will Never Own, I give you the ROG Crosshair X870 He Extreme, a $900 before taxes Motherboard, which will try to show off the best of what Asus can do without any kind of, of budget control. And the first question which comes to mind, well, uh, what would warrant such an obscenely high cost? Well, starting with the obvious. Now, the Extreme is as heavy as a French prostate at about 3 kilograms on its own and features a premium 8 low-loss PCB layers EATX form factor motherboard, the all reinforced by 2 ounces of copper plate. The best 2025 gave us in terms of static insulation and robustness. But in addition, it also comes with a rather beautiful rock-themed uh, backplate, which itself will serve as a cooling shield since it is equipped with thermal pads to further drain excess heat from key components. And worth noting, this is an EATX motherboard, so sensibly larger than your usual ATX motherboard, so make sure to get a larger chassis for a comfortable build experience. Asus is starting the premium at the very fundamental of this motherboard, and because this will have a, a, a direct intimate uh, uh, impact going from robustness to heat dissipation and, and lifespan it deserves the 9.5 out of 10 the first time i give such a high grade on any kind of you know segment on my motherboard so well done to asus for this design wise while the extreme stays very close to its uh, hero cheaper variant but uh, showing a more calm yet confident aesthetic. The all-seeing ROG eye occupies about half of this already massive motherboard, showing off Asus complete control in terms of aluminum sending, with two opposing shades contouring this beautiful stair. The metals are cut precisely, and they do capture the light in a very mineral matte effect which furthers the underline of the ROG eye logo. What I particularly like is that even the board uh, connector cover are made of sanded metal and depart from the usual cheap plastic we had seen before. In short, I dig it. I dig it deep. Now, RGB-wise, Asus decided to not spoil the extreme gorgeous metal work with some tacky embedded RGB light and that I applaud, especially given the fact that it gives a full scene to that beautiful, gorgeous OLED screen which has more use than just uh, being aesthetically beautiful with some pre-programmed animation as we will see later on on the review. And worth mentioning, given how thick the OLED screen is, you can slide it away from your chassis and avoid obstructing your exhaust fan or other case metallic angles, a rather useful feature. But other than that, Asus still thought about all the herpes propagating poets out there and gave us a chance to express our so captivating soul thanks to those three RGB connectors lucky us. Now, going in more technical details, the Extreme is powered by AMD's winning combo, namely the AM5 CPU socket and its X870E chipset. The AM5 CPU socket will support everything since the Ryzen 7000 uh, to the 9000 series, but most noticeably, the supported CPUs all come with very fast 24 PCIe 5.0 lanes, in addition to the slower but still very important chipset provided PCIe 3 and PCIe 4.0 lanes. VRM-wise, well, the Extreme plays it very safe, uh, reprising the very same power solution we had seen on both the ROG Strix X870 He He and the ROG X870 He Hero, meaning that we have about 2,400 amps worth of CPU juice organized in a 20 plus 2 plus 2 configuration. And, and that's not a critic, okay? That kind of power solution is more than you'll ever need to run anything available on, on the 9000 series, even the 9950X. Actually, you could probably run two of them side by side with this kind of VRM. So uh, again, more, more than, than needed. And if anything, it's more as a, a complement to the Hero and the Strix series, which are well, half price and, and features the very same 
power solution. The cooling solutions remains very similar to its Trix and Hero variant, meaning a rather large two block cooler linked by a wide 8mm copper pipe, which will be really good at spreading the heat among them blocks homogeneously. Both blocks feature a thermal padded double contact design for a more intimate relief, which is both uh, predictable and appreciated. And so therefore the thermal test comes without surprise. With temperatures uh, which saturated our blocks at minute 15 and expressed about as much heat as was produced, which is a good thing, with a very well spread 55 to 60 degrees Celsius between both blocks after an hour long of synthetic stress test. In short, uh, the best VRM or among the best VRM we've seen from Asus or anyone in the industry this year and one of the most reliable and overclocking friendly uh, as well. So I knew I would not want to see this uh, power solution, this motherboard coupled with anything less than the R9 9900X obviously. Now where we see the ROG X870 heat extreme pushing boundaries is on its RAM support. We have our usual 256 gigabyte of DDR5 organized in a dual channel configuration, but thanks to the ASUS only NitroPath DRAM technology, we can now hope to reach unprecedented data swap speeds up to 9,000 million transfer per second to be precise. Now, the NitroPass DRAM technology is usually available on higher end ASUS motherboard and changes the way DRAM connects to its 288 pin slot. And that is what allowed in part the ROG Crosser X870E Extreme to go from 8,200 million transfer per second, which we've seen before in speeds on other crosshairs, uh, crosshair motherboard on that series, to 9,000 million transfer per second. Now, when, when I said in part, is because you do not only need uh, a board like this with Nitro Pass to be able to get to those higher clocks. What you also need is the right kind of sticks. Like the high performance Hynix MDI featured in the rather robust and affordable uh, Patriot Xtreme 5 seen here. An amazing top of the industry RAM solution, which will not only please AAA gamers, that's kind of a, <laughs> an obvious point, but also, and most importantly, people are gonna use this board on centric, sorry, memory centric tasks, such as video editing, 3D rendering, uh, and all that. Now, storage wise, well, the Extreme makes great use of every bit of bandwidth put at its disposition. We have five very fast NVMe connectors, three on board and two mounted. The three on boards are all CPU fed and can run up to four lanes at PCIe 5.0 standard, meaning that they can all swap data individually up to an insane, obscene, crazy 128 gigabit per second each. The two other mounted NVMEs are uh, uh, chipset fed and receive a dedicated non-bifurcated four lanes at PCIe 4.0 standard each, which will translate into still very fast 64 gigabit per second of data swap individually. And for once, they all sit in premium class with a double thermal pad cooling treatment for every one of them. Worth noting, the closest NVMe connector to the CPU received the bulk of the cooling attention with a massive cooling block equipped with a copper pipe for a faster heat relief. And obviously this is where I would put uh, my boot stick if anywhere. Now the only caveat we have here is the fact that unlike MSI or Gigabyte products uh, to have access to our NVMEs on this motherboard, we still have to go through screwed uh, plates. So you need a screwdriver and, and you don't have latches. Uh, that's kind of not amazing for me. I know that some ASUS engineers are talking about vibrations, and, but I mean, those motherboards are not gonna be mounted on four by fours to worry so much about vibrating plates. To be fair, the main NVMe, the, the closest one to our, our processor with that big block does have a latch. That's great, but I would have loved to see uh, 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 the two other NVMEs uh, you know, equipped uh, with that kind of options. Now, export-wise, well, at this price range, we do have a dual export support. Got them right, we do. In a single GPU export configuration, we have 16 lanes at PCIe 5.0 standard. In a dual GPU configuration, both slots share their PCIe 5.0 lanes in an 8x8 configuration, which is still plenty of bandwidth to run comfortably a couple of 5090s. So quit bitching mother. Now, obviously they both are metallically reinforced to bear the heaviness of life. Uh, 
and of the GPUs as well. But most groundbreakingly, Asus is sticking by its controversial discrete GPU locking mechanism, which is operated by a trigger inside the slot and which was accused to scratch the GPU PCB after the 200th uh, removal also known as uh, no problem, that there's no problem, there's that. But for the most uh, knowledgeable viewers among you, you already know that this is almost too good to be true because when you know how many total PCI 5.0 lanes we have available on the board and, and how many components are using them, that's just, it doesn't add up. The, the mass is not correct. So yes, obviously it means that we do have some PCIe bifurcations. PCIe bifurcation. Fuck with that. These two PCIe 5.0 M.2 solid state drive connectors share their bandwidth with our GPU slot, meaning that if either or both of them are populated and used, well, the GPU slot uh, will go from 16 PCIe 5.0 lanes to only eight, which, which again, if I may somewhat reassure you, is, is more than enough for our RTX 5090. So present proof, but no longer future proof. And in addition, yeah, uh, you guessed it, the second GPU export is now dead. In short, uh, uh, the Crosser X870 E Extreme uh, component tree is playing musical chair uh, with the PCA 5.0 lanes in our CPU. That is a lot of PCA 5.0 wording, which is so hard on my tongue. You have no ideas. My teeth go this way, my tongue goes that way, and for a Frenchman, it's absolutely uh, not acceptable. I want to rebrand the PCAE to blah. Much easier to pronounce in French. Blah 5.0. Back IO wise, we are not reinventing the wheel. Again, we have a very similar uh, back IO seen on the Hero, meaning 180 gigabit per second worth of USB plugs, including two very premium and yummy USB fours. And obviously, the all is complemented by an additional 40 gigabit per second worth of front panel connector for a grand total of 220 gigabit per second worth of IO bandwidth. Integrated graphic wise, we can count on the total of of a three-way display support thanks to our straightforward HDMI plug as well as our USB 4 display port secondary compatibility. Connectivity wise, the premium is here and solid with a must have 10 gigabit LAN, which is now a real necessity, especially knowing that for example, my fiber is at eight gigabit per second. So yeah, I was not needing 10 gigabit LAN until this year, and I'm very happy to see it here. And worth mentioning, it is also seconded by a still very fast 5 gigabit LAN. On the other hand, the Wi-Fi 7 dual band adapter does not deceive with a screwless plug-in antenna and close to 6 gigabit per second worth of low latency data transfer. In short, we are in the gold here. But most excitingly for me as a creator, the audio solution is absolutely excellent with the top of the industry and rare Supreme FX ALC4082 from Realtek, cleansed by a generous 500 farads worth of Nikakon fine gold capacitors and refined, distilled and rendered by an excellent ES9219 Quadac. All the ingredients for studio graded audio recording experience and a cinematic uh, uh, playback as well, since this uh, um, audio solution comes, and I think that the first one I've seen in this year, at least the X870E powered solutions, uh, by an Atmos uh, codec, which is pretty grand. Overall, um, well, the best of Asus is also probably the best in the world as we stand right now. The back IO is probably one of the highlights of the extreme motherboard altogether, and yeah, it deserves another very high 9 out of 10 grading. Now, cooling wise, well, there's a lot here. We have our usual eight PWM fan connectors uh, for strong airflow, as well as an all in one water pump connector for a good all in one CPU cooler. And just in case you would want a more complex custom water cooling solution, uh, we also have another dedicated water pump connector, a temperature sensor connector, and for the craziest amongst you, we even have an LN2 switch and condensation LEDs in the case you have lost all hope in life and wanted to try yourself at uh, well, uh, nitrogen cooling. Yes, uh, that might happen. My, my point is that the Extreme wears well its name and uh, from a simple fan to Zeus seminal uh, uh, fluid, all the cooling systems are here covered. Now, here comes 
my favorite part of this 67 chapter reviews, and yes, I've seen you watching the timeline of the video, troubleshooting uh, wise. Our easy debugger is here for a vulgar yet vital look at our boot sequence, but obviously our troubleshooting experience is greatly improved by an OLED error code screen, which will refine our uh, yeah, uh, error tracking. But being in a high-end and complex motherboard, we also have a full array of measurement points uh, to identify any physical short and, and as well a collection of buttons and switches such as power retry programmable reset flashback clear CMOS button soldered in many places to not only find your way to that perfect boot status but also making you look like mozart doing so now this would not be an extreme motherboard if we did not have the most gorgeous informatic OLED screen ever created. CPU speed, temperature, error codes, again, the ROG OLED screen will keep you well informed of any state and status relating to your build and your prostate. Now, in conclusion, <laughs> well, the ROG Crosser X870E Extreme is extremely expensive at a eye-watering 900 USD before taxes and, and it used to be a thousand so it's a hundred dollar down in the past few weeks which is good um, and the question is uh, is it worth it and I'll answer to that of course not there's no thousand dollar motherboard in the world which is worth a thousand dollar but that's not the point of the extreme is it i suspect that this board was not meant to be sold in great numbers and uh, it was more meant to show off uh, what a bunch of engineers can do if you put them in a room long enough with a highly restricted internet connection and what they did is together the very best most performant components in the world and created what probably is one of the very best uh, motherboard I've ever had the pleasure to toy with. But if you want to talk about value, the truth of the matter is that for about a third of the price less, you can get a hero, uh, the ROG uh, Crosshair X870 He Hero, which will give you about 90% of the features here. It has an identical VRM, an identical audio solution, back IO, dual GPU support, etc, etc, etc. But those 10 remaining percent of premium are so absolutely wonderful, gorgeous, the OLED screen, like the all-knowing OLED screen, the finish, the... it's a jewel, it's not a motherboard, it's precious, and I'm so sad that if I had it, I'd have to put a big fat GP on it, because it's a real piece of technological art. So I think that the Raw Crosser X870 Extreme was more made to make a point that Asus, in terms of engineering and innovation, was still the master of the universe. And in that regard, mission accomplished.